Okay, so we looked at the uh, tropical forcing of the extratropics and the extratropical forcing uh, energy flux coming into the uh, tropics and affecting the monsoon break periods, MJO convection and so on. This is kind of a summary of the tropical extratropical coupled interactions and feedbacks. We are looking at the MJO heat source region here and the standard monsoon domains are Australian, uh, South Asian, uh, Asian, East Asian and Western North Pacific uh, monsoons. Of course the East Asian monsoon goes all the way into the extratropics itself and we also have the West African uh, monsoon here and we have the diabatic heating generating Rossby waves and divergent flow which is shown here and it's going up gradient to the uh, vorticity so vorticity uh, planetary vorticity F obviously increases with latitude as shown here and the divergent flow is against uh, going up the gradient instead of down the gradient and there are various uh, connections we already talked about uh, the blocking patterns here are being uh, interacting with the uh, South Asian and Asian summer monsoon and we talked uh, about the examples where the Kara C, uh, sea ice extent and the North Atlantic SST and vorticity can send Rossby waves uh, interacting with the blocking pattern and coming down and creating either late season, season uh, wet extremes or the late season uh, droughts. Obviously those are intra-seasonal processes because they are happening within a month or a few weeks uh, as opposed to the monsoon season. Uh, then you have the PNA pattern which is affected by the uh, Rossby waves being forced from the uh, tropical convection. There are of course Rossby waves going from the monsoon heating into the Arctic uh, as well and you also have uh, Rossby waves going over and creating uh, the interactions with the NAO and we know that the NAO phase change then can feed back to the uh, West African monsoon and uh, triggering MJO convection uh, for example and there are also independent energy fluxes that are not necessarily related to the tropical forcing that can come down and affect tropical processes uh, uh, especially the heating processes that we, mo we most worry about and of course the uh, atmospheric river phenomenon shown here is very critical for snow and uh, rainfall that is brought to the uh, uh, west coast of the US up into uh, northwestern Canada as well uh, and you have the boreal winter teleconnections shown in these blue arrows and boreal summer teleconnections shown with these uh, magenta arrows uh, so this is kind of a brief summary I have actually a, a full chapter three chapters actually one on tropical influence on the extratropics extratropical influence on the tropics and tropical extratropical uh, interactions and feedbacks in the tropical dynamics course we don't explicitly focus on the interseasonal variability over there but these uh, links are obviously uh, driven by sometimes background flows uh, that are uh, um, modulated by slow lower frequencies like the monsoon season itself or the El Nino and La Nina and so on but the uh, the uh, processes happen on much faster time scale for example the MGO heating onto the NAO happens in with a couple of weeks lag and same thing with the PNA pattern and so on. Nonetheless looking at the Janu January 370k uh, isentrope PV climatology. You see the storm tracks and the jet streams there. Uh, you see the easterly jet here in the tropics with the westerly duct uh, appearing as a main feature in the climatology of potential vorticity which allows for uh, extratropical Rossby waves to come into the uh, deep tropics. There are lots of details on why this is so critical. Uh, the Rossby wave propagation uh, depends on the background winds, background shears, zonal shear, meridional shear uh, and so on. So the waxing and waning seasonal variability of the jets uh, storm tracks constantly produce 
what are called recursive Rossby waves, Rossby wave breaking and energy fluxes. We haven't defined potential vorticity in this uh, podcast series, but essentially it's different than the vorticity, which I'm sure you are aware of, the tendency to rotate, which is very natural on a rotating framework like our planet. Potential vorticity is something that is related to the fact that the atmosphere and the ocean are always stratified, so each layer uh, isentrope, let's say, can have a vorticity. Why is it called potential vorticity? Because you can think of it as a ice skater, where ice skater is spinning, and by stretching her hands or pulling her hands together, she can change her rotation rate. So by changing the uh, the the thickness of the isentropes, for example, the vorticity can change. So there is a potential vorticity that is associated with the thickness of uh, the uh, um, isentropes for example okay this is somewhere in the upper level so seasonal change you can look at july instead of the climatology uh, uh, sorry july climatology instead of the january climatology and you see the monsoonal circulation changes the strong easterly jet uh, now over the the monsoon region extending uh, into the west african region and you have now the tropical upper a tropospheric trough which is clearly streaming in the potential vorticity from the uh, 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 storm track region. There are similar teleconnections in the southern hemisphere which uh, are s we are not looking at but they cannot be ignored. We've already seen some uh, that occur this way as well. So if you look at the uh, uh, July 370 kPV climatology uh, here uh, you can see the uh, uh, the, the uh, tropical upper, upper tropospheric uh, trough. So this is looking uh, specifically at uh, characteristics of the PV fields on 370K isentrope. It's same as the previous figure except for uh, the July. July climatology uh, with U bar equal to uh, zero. So the background uh, zonal wind field is stationary. So these are produced from a model that uh, Webster has been uh, working with for a long time. Uh, the 370k PV field for 9th July 2012 uh, in B, and I'm not showing C here, but you can see that the particular day, the constant Rossby wave breaking and uh, streams being produced, potential vorticity comes in. During the July monsoon season you have the potential vorticity uh, minimum sitting here and this extratropical potential vorticity substance coming in uh, streams across the Indian domain uh, around the monsoon uh, PV into the uh, east of West African uh, all the way into West Africa. So this is then going to go back to the higher latitudes uh, here. So essentially you have uh, divergent circulation being produced in the tropics and working through uh, the jet uh, and sending potential vorticity substance poleward. So in the longitudinal direction, let's say you are here on the African uh, longitude and here you're in the northeastern Pacific so you have distortion and breaking and recursive production of PV flux that is going to then come in towards the tropics equatorward through this westerly duct and the tropical upper, upper tropospheric uh, trough. So basically, basically you have Rossby wave dynamics uh, related to the divergent circulation related to the convection and diabetic heating and the uh, uh, communication back and forth between the tropics and extra tropics. So this is the key um, idea behind the uh, tropical extratropical interactions and feedbacks at intraseasonal time scale. Uh, hopefully you are convinced by now that these are occurring all the time and so, uh, obviously you are always looking for predictability. For example, if there is a Rossby wave coming from the North Atlantic into the monsoon domain, uh, going to create a wet extreme or a dry extreme uh, late in the season, 
can the uh, uh, s signal be traced and uh, predictions may be made uh, at interseasonal time scale which can be very critical for agriculture water resource management uh, even health and and so on okay so there are other interactions of mjo like the atmospheric river which clearly has a predictability for western us in terms of uh, uh, rain uh, coming in uh, or snow coming in um, uh, to the uh, California region which is now struggling for almost a decade with persistent drought so these pineapple expresses or the atmospheric rivers are a very critical source of uh, water for uh, the west coast of the US okay so that's a quick run through the uh, tropical extratropical interactions and feedbacks and then we will now look at uh, some of the theoretical and mechanistic details of the uh, tropical forcing of the extratropics and extratropical forcing of the tropics. A lot of work has been done. The other ideas that are there, even though Rossby waves driven by diabetic heating have been looked at uh, a lot, there are also other processes. For example, the uh, MJO to NAO connection is argued to be through the tropos uh, through the stratosphere, and the jet stream uh, modulations are also invoked uh, in some of the tropical uh, extratropical interactions uh, and so on. So, eddies, uh, features like the jet streams and Rossby waves, all of them together are creating these tropical extratropical interactions and feedbacks.